This is a difficult presentation for me. I'm often asked about our model. We are a research institution, so we don't quite fit in the typical category of agency or consultancy. Indeed, the point of this short presentation is to answer a question that I'm asked frequently, and that is, is there any way to engage with the scientists and analysts at MEC Labs in order to drive results? To do that, I want to share with you a series of experiments, but very fast. So watch with me quickly and seek a, a pattern. What we're going to do is talk about what these experiments as a collection uh, represent in terms of science and the kind of breakthrough thinking that could provide dramatic impact for you and help you achieve results. So I begin with Aetna's HealthSpire organization and you'll see a 638% increase. And I'm going to go to another from Toll Brothers, and you'll see a 166.5% increase. And uh, another from Fluke, defense contractor, 96.28% increase. And uh, let's continue. The New York Times, a 1600% increase. The uh, PR Newswire, 202.52% increase. And uh, CBS Sports, a 45.5%. Verizon, a 752.89%. Uh, CubeSmart, this is in revenue, 3.1 million in revenue. And uh, finally, a smaller organization. It's important to know that we do very specific research with startups and with smaller organizations, but this represents a 33.37% increase and a breakthrough for them. Now, all of that connects to a question that I have for you, and that is, what did these what did these experiments have in common? When I first began this research program, there was no such thing as testing and optimization on the internet. We pioneered the concept nearly 30 years ago. And today I see much testing, but I don't see the, the core science necessary to doing what test should most of all achieve. That is a predictive model that helps explain the customer's decision process and helps you gain superior competitive advantage. What do all these tests have in common? They were not uh, test and learns. They were not a series of interesting ideas. They were not quick wins. They were essentially a tapestry of thinking weaved together in a very careful hypothesis that yielded more than a conversion increase. They yielded a deep understanding of how customers think. Now, I believe that virtually every marketing department I speak with in so many organizations are failing to grasp the significance of a customer theory. Everything we do here is about the decision process, the necessary conclusions that lead to the yes. I spent 30 years trying to understand that. And I want to share with you how that works, what we've been discovering, and in just a few minutes, help you get a sense of what our research program is like and how it may be of some help for you. You're looking at a timeline. I cannot take you through the long story of how all of this evolved, but I can tell you this. Many, many years ago, when the internet was still in Unix, uh, I began to see the potential for it as a behavioral research laboratory. I thought if it continued to evolve, particularly with greater uh, number of nodes and greater bandwidth, we would see transactions occur online. And transactions represent decisions. They are the molecular unit of the thought sequence, and they help us understand how people select, how people choose. For me, the advent of the internet was one of the most exciting things I've ever encountered. Not because we would see media or or banking online, but because we could see thinking online. Now, I share that with you to say that over these last 25 plus years, we've been doing pattern analysis, meta-analysis, building heuristics, and creating a comprehensive single picture of how the mind works. I've put all of that in a book called The Marketer is Philosopher, and it really is a series of, of illustrations and careful explanation in the form of reflections that builds a unified theory of, of marketing based on a much more uh, in-depth theory on how people process options and how they select and make decisions. This program is sort of the most important element 
in, in all of my professional career. And if I could tie it all together into its most compelling piece, it's understanding a simple division issue. Something that now has become a popular word, though it was unfamiliar in commerce until recently, and that is the word conversion. The division is that, that number of actions and that number of yeses and uh, the relationship between the two. If you want your business to grow, you need to get more yeses. If you want to get more yeses, you need to understand how people are processing your message and thus how they make decisions and thus what's necessary in your presentation to get a yes. This is science and it is art and it is the two combined in a symbiotic relationship and we've been building tool sets for instance, we ran 10,000 plus path experiments to understand just the importance of the value proposition in influencing choice. Overall, the lab has ran more than 20,000 experiments and built the largest library in the field. We're still learning and we're still embarrassed by what we don't know. But we have learned a way to get the answers. And uh, you'll see some of the heuristics that we use. These can uh, be misunderstood. They're not math equations. They don't need to overwhelm your thinking. And they're not tools or gimmicks or some sort of ploy designed to, to make uh, thinking look appealing. These are a very specific way to engage a lens, a way to see a new paradigm that will get you from your perspective into the perspective of the customer. Because if you can achieve that, if you can see your message through their eyes, you can understand their actions. You'll see one of the heuristics we developed for many years on getting an ad to be effective, or an email message, or any conversion opportunity related to uh, the choice around an offer. These are all uh, simple illustrations of those heuristics in action, and I will not dwell on them because I want to keep this very concise. They're meant to illustrate three of ten key heuristics we engage when trying to achieve the maximum, what we call, yes rate. Along with that, you'll see very specific tools that we've built here. I'm going to take the one I've paused on for a moment, the competitive analysis. You can learn to do a competitive analysis with an MBA. That is not what this is about. This is about understanding the messaging, we call it the articulation, of the value proposition uh, as it relates to your competitors' messages. If you can understand that, you can understand how to create more force in the way you speak about your product and your offers. And each of these tools culminate in something we call a customer theory. This is, and should be, the holy grail of your marketing activities. Indeed, if you build a robust customer theory, you achieve something we call coherence. And with that coherence, a very important word in philosophy of science, with that coherence, you're able to predict the behavior of prospects and customers. Once you've achieved that, you have the foundation for true competitive advantage. So all of this, uh, together with our testing program, by the way, testing is essential to our organization, but that's not what we're about. Testing just helps us bridge the gap between what we know and what we need to know. It's a powerful tool when it's engaged properly. Testing transcends optimization. It's about essence, not peripheral improvements. All of that comes together in a research program based on patents we filed many years ago and based on a series of experiments in 2002 that led us to partnering with private sector organizations conducting research in a way that absolutely pays for itself. I can remember the breakthrough moment. It was a turning point for me. I needed a way to basically finance an unlimited research budget. In those days, people didn't talk about optimization. Virtually no one had a testing program. I remember the eureka moment when I was looking at the metrics of an airline. We have benchmarked in 36,000 companies and I could see from their metrics that they were leaking over 300, to be precise, $320 million a year. They were leaking it because they did not understand how to maximize the force of their message. And they didn't understand that because they did not have a model of their customer's mind. I remember explaining to them that we could 
more or less plug the leak. Now this isn't just about a website project. This, this impacted for them and for others the whole approach to customer research. The website development and design thinking. I don't even believe in a classic website. It is a platform designed to cue zeros and ones in such a way as to create a visual stimulus. And you need to see beyond the website into the entire funnel and understand the interconnectedness of this. The product creation and launch, value proposition and brand work, all of these hinge on a superior understanding of the mind. And all of these can be ROI'd very specifically by tying them to the yes rate. That's what we do. And we have no goal to be a McKinsey or an Accenture. We're not trying to be an agency or compete with any of those. We're trying to build the most robust research program in the world, in our field. More importantly, that's just a means to an end, and the end is an answer, an understanding. But by partnering with us, we can help you improve the performance of your agencies or your consultancies or your marketing team, and we can help you ROI the entire engagement. If you're interested in finding out more, then you may want to look at uh, a case study uh, in depth for projects that we're doing in an ongoing research engagement with Aetna. There's a link to it. Or you can reach out to us and we'll do our best to answer your questions. At this point, typically people have very practical questions. For instance, how much does this cost, if any, to me? Do I have to come up with money on the front side? Uh, is there uh, how much would that be? What are the resource requirements on my side? What's a classic engagement look like? What is the timeline, uh, the, the milestones, the deliverables? We can answer all those questions for you. Just reach out. We'll do our best to have a transparent, direct conversation. One more thing, and I hope this doesn't come across wrong, but we have no sales team here. We pay no commissions here. We're looking for true research partners and long-term relationships that will lead to deep and profound discovery.